that in fact these early functions of dynamics are quite parallel uh, to the early functions of star and R in regulating this information at COP1 uh, and COP2 uh, as a goal. So now I want to talk to you about dynamics later uh, role in endocytosis as a component of the fission apparatus. And uh, much of this work was done by two very talented uh, 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 postdocs in the lab, uh, Rajesh Ramachandra, who left this week for uh, uh, the uh, Physiology and Biophysics Department at Case Western, and Thomas Sukadil, who will be returning in the summer uh, back to India uh, to start the lab. So there have been several models for dynamic as a mechanic chemical enzyme mediating membrane fission. Uh, the first uh, detailed model was put forward by Jenny Henshaw, uh, uh, having examined the structure of dynamic on lipid, uh, assembled on the lipid uh, tubules, or uh, on the lipid on these tubules, both in the absence of nucleotides and in the presence of a non hydrolyzable analog of and then he noted, noted that, uh, that the tubules became constricted in the presence of the and suggested that the dynamic function can squeeze the neck uh, uh, for, for, for membrane fission. Harry McMahon also looked at different nucleotide bound states of assembled dynamics, this time onto more rigid preformed lipid nanotubules, and he found a uh, structure much like Jenny's in the presence of this non hydrolyzable analog of CDP. But when he uh, 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 assembled dynamic in the presence of GPP, he saw a more open helix, and he suggested that GPP hydrolysis caused a helical expansion that would pop off uh, a vesicle from, from the membrane. In a more recent study, uh, Pietro Di Camilli and Aurelia Rue in his lab uh, pre-assembled dynamic, allowed dynamic to pre-assemble on on lipids that they were drawn out of a, of a reservoir uh, of lipids. And then they added a fiduciary uh, uh, gold bead onto the uh, uh, pre-assembled dynamic, added GTP to that, and they found that the bead spun around and twisted around uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, tube here. Uh, so they suggested that GTP hydrolysis uh, drove a twisting action that would twist off uh, 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 however, all of these models are based on global conformational changes of pre-assembled dynamics, by and large dynamics that first pre-assemble either in the presence of non-hydrolyzable analogs of PCP or in the absence of new types. Secondly, all of them conclude that dynamic alone was not sufficient to cause stages. So in Jenny's case, and in Pietro's case, it suggested that external tension was required, uh, uh, that, the, that, that, that the two ends of the, of the tubules had to be tethered onto something to get uh, fission in the middle. And in the case of Harvey's model, uh, he suggested that you needed to push against something like a coat protein uh, in order to get the, the popping to occur. There was no fission uh, occurring in his uh, isolated tubules. But, you know, the fact is that in the cell, dynamic is always in the presence of GTP. And as I told you uh, earlier, uh, with its 10 micromolar affinity for GTP, it's also pretty much always down. So how can you reconcile these, these models with, 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 with that property of dynamic? Uh, and so we wanted to look at the dynamic behavior of dynamic, the dynamic behavior of dynamic on and so uh, then in, into Rajesh Ramachandran, who set up real-time assays for, 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 for dynamic activity. And he did this first by mutating all of the uh, surface accessible systems on the molecule to serine, uh, confirming that this, uh, that this mutant of dynamic behaves exactly as the wild-type patients of the vivo uh, and in vitro, and then adding back uh, single cysteine in different places in the molecule that it could then uh, label with uh, fluorescent salt. And the first fluorescent salt we used uh, labeling this uh, isoleucine in a variable loop in the pH domain was NDD. NDD is an environmentally sensitive probe that is 
it does it for us in aqueous solution, but when you put it into a non-polar uh, environment like a lipid bilayer, uh, you can see uh, as you add dynamic, you get fluorescently labeled dynamic to liposome, you see there's about eightfold, seven eightfold increase in fluorescence. So what happens when you add nucleotides to this uh, dynamic? In the presence of GMT species, nothing happens. You basically stabilize dynamic on the membrane, and there's no further binding. That is, dynamic membrane interactions are nucleotide independent, consistent with what uh, Jenny said. Oh. This is rapidly from the membrane, reaching a new equilibrium that involves reactions of assembly hydraulic uh, Introducing cysteine in another location in the molecule and labeling it with a different probe, in this case for dipping, uh, suggests develops an assay to measure dynamic dynamic interaction on the membrane. Uh, so when dynamic assembles on the membrane, these bodipi fluorophores come into close contact with each other and you get auto quenching. So once again, when you add liposome, you see the quenching of uh, bodipi fluorophores uh, due to dynamic dynamic interaction. Now in this case, when you add GMP PCP, you see further quenching of the signal. Now, since there's no more binding of the molecule uh, under these conditions, we interpret this as a conformational change that brings the fluorophores to uh, closer of proximity or, or angle to each other so that the quenching increases. And we think this is probably uh, a fluorescent uh, correlate to the persistent state that, that Jenny Winshaw uh, has, has, has published. When you add GTP, you see a transient uh, move towards this conformational change, and then, as you expect, the disassembly uh, of dynamics from the, from the lipid bilayer. Comparing the kinetics of disassembly of the membrane, the kinetics of release from the membrane by the NDE dissociation assay, and the kinetics of disassembly of dynamic dynamic interaction as measured by the Bodipi assay, you see about a one second lag here. Mm. in which dynamic remains on the membrane, but uh, remains assembled, but releases the membrane. Mm. Right? So the question is, how do you reconcile this behavior uh, to the membrane fission, the mechanism for membrane fission? So uh, enter Thomas Fukadil, who, uh, who took a page uh, out of uh, a playbook of developing uh, planar supported lipid bilayers. This has been around, method has been around for some time in which uh, you could take liposomes, absorb them through a glass surface, they absorb, fuse, and rupture to create a supported uh, uh, a supported uh, bilayer on the glass surface. This can be done with glass cover slips, but it also can be done with uh, glass beads, silica beads. Uh, in which you can deposit a uh, supported bilayer around the bead with a thin aqueous layer uh, of about a na nanometer so that these lipids are free to diffuse uh, within the plane of, uh, of the bilayer. Uh, the problem is when you make a tight, stable, supported lipid bilayer, there is no reservoir from which you might be able to remodel the membrane or pinch off vesicles. And so uh, what Thomas uh, uh, developed uh, is a new approach in which he deposits uh, these liposomes on beads uh, in the presence of a high salt buffer. And there's a paper that has just been uh, accepted a couple of weeks ago in Biophysics Journal that uh, reveals the mechanism of, of, of how we're getting this extra membrane uh, uh, deposited on, on these beads. But but under these conditions, Thomas gets about a three-fold more lipid on the bead than is required for a nice, tight-fitting uh, uh, membrane. We think of this like a um, pre-plastic uh, surgery uh, coated bead, a little floppy there instead of a nice, tight, young, uh, young, uh, young coated <laughs> So uh, you can see this reservoir here when we take these beads.